Okay, so my name is Fabio Velarde. I'm part of the Sologenic team, and I've been building on the XRPL for about five years now. So just to paint a bit of a picture, five years of Sologenic started when we saw a necessity to have an interface to allow everyday users and traders to interact with the order book, the organic order book on the XRPL. So in 2020, we deployed Sologenic Dex, which gave you uh, the experience you would uh, have in a centralized exchange at the time with the organic order book. And on top of it, we, we also built uh, a market index and other tooling to facilitate trading on a decentralized ledger as the XRPL. Now, since then, our vision has always been to build this infrastructure and ultimately introduce RWAs. At the time, we didn't call them RWAs. We, we call them uh, security tokens. And my point is that we, we built this infrastructure to service financial products at that time. Um, however, in 2021, as you guys know, there was no clear frameworks for digital securities. So in, in that sense, we've been focusing on building the infrastructure. And also, last year, we got to partner with a broker dealer that is licensed by FINRA and the SEC to finally bring stocks to the blockchain. So I wanted to start this talk just with a little bit of an exercise, because this is a diverse crowd. I know there's uh, builders, institutions, researchers, developers. But what do you guys think when you see or hear the word stock? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Stake in a company? Shares. That's it? OK. The SEC. <laughs> so usually, the, the answers that I've, I've gotten is usually people talk about Microsoft, Tesla, uh, Apple. And what is, these are US equities, right? Like US equities are predominantly uh, the most popular stocks. And these are companies that build products that we use on a day-to-day you know, basis. So hence, we decided to focus on US equities. Now, the, the topic that I wanted to elaborate on is the why. You know, why, why tokenizing US equities if they are already accessible? They are already, if you live in the US, you can create uh, an account and access them on demand. It's easy, right? So our thesis is that the next 100 million users won't start with DeFi native products. They won't start trading on an AMM pool or, or you know, uh, doing liquid staking. They will start investing in products that they understand and they use, and that is stocks. So here's some numbers that kind of like prove that point. 44% uh, of Gen Z's first ever investment was crypto, whether that was a meme coin or an NFT back in 2022. Uh, they started on a digital wallet. Now, 65% of Gen Z's also are proven to invest in mobile apps. And I think everyone can relate to it. In this digital era, our phone is our compass for everything that, that we do. And ultimately, Gen Z is 4x more likely to hold crypto and expect a return instead of investing in traditional financial products, offering a brokerage account, and perhaps investing in a 401k. So this is a reality. Uh, the sources of these numbers uh, were some uh, surveys by, by FINRA and the CFA Institute. So now let's talk about why institutions, the issuers of these assets, would care to, to even um, come onto the blockchain, right? And this is something very palpable, specifically in the last two years, how institutional the space have gotten. Um, I was just recently in Digital Asset Week in New York about three weeks ago, and all of the major banks were participating in roundtables, talking about how this is a database update from their eyes, right? Um, so the first reason that I identify as the re you know, uh, a core value proposition for institutions is capital mobility. And capital mobility is just a fancy word to say that money moves fast. Um, by using blockchain rails, institutions are able to leverage a single asset and kind of repurpose it, right? For example, they can rehypothecate this asset to s settle different trades. And since it has global mobility, these trades could be untied to one single jurisdiction. They can collateralize these assets and ultimately uh, leverage the inst instant settlement that XRP or 
other blockchains uh, offer. The second point it has to do more for uh, has to do more with the distribution side of things, and this is something that a lot of RWA projects are struggling with because they think sometimes that just because you tokenize something that means that it's going to have a demand on on the blockchain. But it is a reality that that institutions see a market opportunity in Web3 native wallets that are already holding crypto from stable coins to altcoins. And this ties into why Web3 users would care. Why would we that already are trading digital assets care about tokenized representations of stocks, equities? The first thing is convenience, right? And, and it's just the ability to diversify your portfolio without having to on and off ramp from different platforms and just managing everything from your self-custody. And the second thing, this is something I'm going to talk about in a bit later, is that transparency, right? Like when we have these stocks on, on blockchain rails, specifically if we're talking about equities that are uh, not publicly traded, um, it does add value to the fact that they are traceable and transparent, and there's an on-chain record of ownership, right? Like see it, track it, move it. So in 2021, I just wanted to put a screenshot of uh, the first iteration of our stock tokenization platform we built in 2021, fully functional. You had the New York Exchange, the NASDAQ, um, all built on XRPL using trust lines. Uh, you could fractionalize the ownership of an asset as well. And uh, you can pretty much even on a testnet, this is all on a testnet environment, create pairs, for example, XRP against Tesla. So technology wasn't the, the roadblock. In 2021, we built it. And since then, uh, a lot has changed. And I'm going to talk about why now is a better time to, to actually push this to market. So like I said, there was no clear framework for digital securities. And there's three points that I want to mention on how has this improved, right? The first one is that broker dealers, like our partner, Texture Capital, they can now custody and tokenize securities, something that wasn't possible three years ago. They even have an ATS, an alternative trading system, that allows you to trade these digital securities. Now, another point that is unrelated has to do with the T plus one settlement. Stocks at this point still uh, have to settle at the DTCC, but the fact that there is an improvement in, in the time, right? T, T plus one means one day, it makes blockchain rails overall more relevant for, for these players. The third reason is actually uh, not necessarily tied to regulation, but the fact that stable coins are much more popular and we see more institutions, including uh, banks, issuing their own stable coins, just speaks to the perfect on-ramp into tokenized markets being stable coins. OK, so what, what was the issue? And, and here, I think uh, I can piggyback a little bit on what, what Brad was talking about earlier today, the problem about um, KYC and overall having to, you know, DIDs and having to trust a certain KYC within different platforms. And this is an issue that I'm, I'm seeing in, in a lot of RWA projects, that without them being uh, interoperable, they're pretty much secluded databases, right? So this is how we see the problem, how we're aiming to solve it. Metadata and complex rules. We're using trust lines. We're using access-based whitelisting. And for KYC checks or identity-bound assets, the XRPL has entities. We use smart tokens as well. Um, but like I said, tokenizing isn't the hard part. It's the rules and the relevance. So I, so this is uh, a quote from Richard Johnson, who is the CEO of Texture Capital. He's sitting on, on the FinRA board and for FinTech, and he also participated in this SEC roundtable. And this was uh, something that he said during the, the roundtable. The way forward for securities is blockchain as the official record of ownership, smart contracts for settlement, and stable coins for cash like. So I think that just puts into one phrase what I was trying to explain of what is the next iteration uh, for security tokenization. So this is Solotex. Solotex is a joint venture that we are starting with 
extra capital, the bucket dealer. And we aim to tokenize the stock market, starting with US equities, so that you can trade them on your digital wallet. So on version one, you're going to be able to invest in US stocks via stablecoin rails, whether that's USDC or RLUSD. USD. You're going to be able to trade 23.5. This will improve with time, but every single product update, we have to uh, get approval from the regulators. And I think the, the value prop here is that you can remain on chain while diversifying your portfolio, like I said. However, for further product updates, we hope to introduce asset collateralization. So for example, if you don't want to sell your XRP, you can lock it in and get some stables to invest in, in stocks, potentially. We also want to unlock uh, permissioned liquidity pools, so a specific stablecoin pairs against tokenized stocks. And further along, we want to also enable the trading of these assets on, on a DEX, you know, P2P trading, and have 24 7 markets that follow their own pricing at that point. Of course, along the way, we're going to introduce other fun features. That, one that I personally really like that I included here is that you're going to be able to kind of like personalize, personalize your own indexes so that, for example, if I have a basket of investments or the stocks that I particularly like. You could see this list and invest on in it and kind of like there's a social component into it that we're building as well. Now, the reason I mentioned Gen C is because like for them, the value proposition is, is very evident. And if we want to go a step further, apart from Gen C, I identify markets outside of the US that don't have direct access to to these uh, stocks as a main driver for, for mass adoption. So this is one of our, our, our you know, uh, marketing creative materials. I really like it because it, it really illustrates what this generation wants, which is an easier path of access that is secure and is still trustworthy. This summarizes what I've just said, you know, the, the comparing Solotex to going the traditional brokerage account way. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about why an order book DEX is kind of like the backbone of, of these assets and why the XRPL was ahead when they, uh, they launched. So in, in, in traditional capital markets, price discovery and liquidity, they rely on, on, on order books, right? Um, and the concept of an AMM is very nascent to, to, to these um, institutions. And, and the fact that there's slippage involved and, and things that are out of the control of the parties that are trading, it, it's a bit problematic at this point. So having a built-in DEX like in the XRPL uh, really does give us zero smart contract risk and overall fast settlement. So now I'm going to talk about Again, what, what are we contributing to, to all of this? So yes, we're launching Solotex. It's a new product. How are we contributing to the XRPL to facilitate access to, to these tokenized stocks? And I wanted to start by quoting, again, uh, CEO of Ripple when he said that sending a payment should be as easy as email, no matter where you are, what currency you're using, or what way. It's that simple. And for this reason, Again, I say that without cross-chain composability, RWAs are just databases. So in that sense, we're going to focus on, on the liquidity layer first. Um, and this is something new. We haven't announced it yet, but we are developing a cross-chain router on XRPL so that you can go from any, any token on the ledger, even if it's new, into uh, a stable. And within point A to point B, we're going to leverage different uh, AMM pools on the XRPL. We're going to leverage the order book itself. And we're going to leverage AMMs on other Cosmos SDK chains like Corium or potentially other IBC enabled blockchains. So the point of doing this is that we, you have a predictable output. You, know, you have a predictable slippage as well, so risk. And it's just going to execute the best route automatically. And the use case that this involves are far um, more ambitious than just getting access to, to Solotex, for example. Um, you could do uh, a, a debit credit card, uh, sorry, a debit card where you can spend crypto and 
potentially issuers like Visa or MasterCard, they will only accept uh, a stable coin. So with using this router, you could potentially build a product like this. And just to finish off, uh, I did want to, to have a bit of a Q&A because I think we have some time. But I really like this uh, tweet that David put out the other day because it really speaks to all that I mentioned, right? Liquidity routing, using the order book. Why does it matter for, for XRP builders, right? For, for people that have been part of this journey to make XRP what it is now. And, and yeah, it, it is a testament on how this event and, and overall everything that we're doing, it's, it's not a competition. It's more so, uh, I would say, a collaboration. And yeah, I just wanted to leave it at that positive note. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the event.